it to him my soul cries out unto him
Shabby up. Uh-huh. Yeah. Shalom, shalom, family. Giving glory to the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Who gives us the breath of life. Yeah. Many there be which say of my soul, there is no help for him in God, but thou, Jehovah, are a shield for me. The glory and lifter of my Shabbat Shalom, family. Don't forget to share the link to your different platforms. Oh, yeah. Let everybody know that we on the Uzi Alewi channel. The Shabbat Night Talk. We praising Yah. Shalom, shalom, family. Welcome once again to the Uzi Alewi channel. My name is Uzi Alewi, one of the teachers of Congregation Beit Da'akak Ubina. Thanking the creator of heaven and earth, food, clothing, and shelter, knowledge, wisdom, and understanding. I am grateful to this great king for my life, the life of all my loved ones, the life of all of you who, who have tuned in tonight to listen to me, to listen to some music, to hear the word of the Most High God. And it's a blessing for us all to be able to um, give glory to this great king. We all must say hallelujah. And um, I'm thankful to this great king for my safe departure and arriving to Panama. And also my safe return as I come back safely. Can't take for granted being on in the air, although they say that... Um, Plane accidents are, are rare, are rare occasion in comparison to to accidents on the road. But nonetheless, going up there is never um, it's never to be taken for granted. And I think I've I've shared this with you 
the family before that the hardest part for me is really the landing um the takeoff makes me feel a little funny uh but besides that um you know everything else is, is pretty good so i'm thankful to the most high god i had a beautiful time two weeks to relax not to think about any any worries or or anything that might take your mind on you know away from just relaxing and i really truly had a good time i thank the most high god for my family um in particular my brother who i just met about six or seven years ago but the way he um the way he he is with me is as if he's been with me for a long long time so um i'm thankful for that that he gives me the the royal treatment mi casa es su casa type of thing um and I'll always be grateful to him for that, my brother Ariel. So, thank you the Most High God for him. Thanking the Creator of Heaven and Earth for all things and everything. Um, Ima Havared, I meant to call you this week, but I got so busy. You know, as soon as I came back in town, everything went ballistics. Everything went crazy, and it was, you know, everything was. I was inundated with everything, and I had to take care of so many things. So. Pardon me, I meant to call you. Um, I will try to call you sometime during the weekend. So I hope you're listening. I hope you didn't fall asleep yet. Thank you the most high God for all of you, all of your lives. I thank the creator for the ability to praise his name. I thank the creator for everything that he does for us. Um, and and protecting us and guiding us hey don't forget to like this video also subscribe to the channel and hit the notification button so that you know every time that we're live so that you could come on all right so that's for everyone out there i um every time i go away and i go to panama I always i always go to different this time i really went to like different parts of the country I went to a part where um, they, you know, I found out that Panama makes the best coffee in the world, which is called the Geisha coffee, which being the bean of the coffee comes from Ethiopia, I believe, but um, the best coffee that's produced in the world is from Panama. And I'm not just saying that because I was born there because I don't take pride in, in Panama because it's is my captivity just like some of you your captivity is the united states um some of you your captivity is in the caribbean islands so forth and so on so it's not a sense of pride but just you know learning a lot of things and seeing a lot of things it was fascinating the, another thing that that i found out is that there's a town in panama called boquete boquet if you read it in Eng in English, you would you would say boquet, but in Spanish it'll be boquete. And to to my surprise, it's the fourth safest town in the world. And because it's the fourth safest town in the world, guess who's there? <laughs> oh my goodness! I went into this remote place where. There is a lot of it. It's indigenous people. It's, it's a region that is could come down to about 55 degrees, 60 degrees, and go up to about 80-something. Mountainous region. Beautiful. All the greenery. You could grow strawberries, and you could grow... Um, coffee and plantains and all types of stuff and yeah there is a um there is an invasion there there is an invasion there and um gentrification is happening everywhere people all over the world wherever some of these people could put their hands on 
that's what they do. That was, dude, that's why, you know, I was very surprised. But then again, I shouldn't be surprised because this is what it is. So I'm grateful to the creator once again, and I'm thankful to the Most High God for, for all of you. This is um is a pleasure. I, I got an opportunity to visit the, the place where my my maternal grandmother was born, also a bunch of indigenous people. Um and it was it was a um it was a beautiful thing. Um and going and going to that area, um we got taken out to the middle of the Caribbean Sea and dropped in the middle of the Caribbean Sea to a place called the um a natural pool where it's the the bottom of the sea looks sky blue of course that's not the sea you know the bottom of the sea was just white sand but it's the reflection i guess from the heavens that gives it the appearance of of just blue and the water just reaches to your waist and that to me was an amazement that you are, in, we were in the middle of the Caribbean Sea in the Atlantic Ocean, and lo and behold, I wasn't, I wasn't, um, I didn't have to 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 kick my feet so I could float or do anything like that. I could just stand, and it was waist high. So, the Most High God makes a lot of amazing things, a lot of amazing things out there that we can't even um, fathom or we can't even understand, all right? And it's all in the creation of the Most High God made. And I never seen nature that, that beautiful, you know, things that God created that beautiful um, before. I've gone to places and, and seen beaches, and yes, Puerto Rico beaches are beautiful and um, things of that nature, but this was a, on a whole different level. So uh, I'm grateful that I was able to see all these things and, and enjoy them with, with family and friends. And I'm thankful to the Most High God that I got to put my feet in some sand. Like I always tell y'all, it's always good at least once a year to put your feet in some sand. Right? It's a it's a tension release. I guess even if you have to go to Coney Island Beach <laughs> or if you gotta go to Reese Beach or go out there in Long Island, wherever you at, just put your put your feet in some sand and allow some of that tension to um to to come out of your body. I don't know if we got people from the West Coast also on. I don't know if there are any anyone from the West Coast. If there's anyone from the West Coast on, please give me a, a, a two. If you're from the West Coast, California, or any coastal area that has a beach, a beachfront from the Pacific Ocean side, um, if anyone out there has that, please put a two. And I just want to ask you a question. Because being in Panama, I noticed that the Pacific Ocean side of Panama, really the beaches are terrible because the tide doesn't come in until like later in the evening. So during the daytime, it just looks like like um, miles of, of the sea being empty because the tide hasn't come in. But now when the tide comes in, you know, it's a different thing. And But the sand and the sea, the Pacific Sea, doesn't seem to have that same effect that than the Atlantic Ocean or the or the um the Atlantic Ocean of the Caribbean Sea. The Pacific Ocean just seems a little a little off, all right? So that never got a chance to dip in the in the Pacific Ocean because the tide was never in. It was never any any um any water till later in the evening. And at that time, no one is trying to dip into water in the nighttime. All right, so I don't know about the beaches in California. I never heard about beaches. In, I heard about Venice Beach and, and places like that, but I don't know 
really how it operates because I know California is the Pacific Ocean, but it's further north, and I don't know how that operates. Peace and love, Moray Tavel. How you doing, my brother? Thanking the creator for all things and, and everything once again. Um, there was something else that I wanted to speak to y'all about in terms of my trip, but I guess that's that. We'll get... I wanted... Um, I was talking to to my brother, Chief Meku, and we were speaking about... Um, Akan, because that's the portion I have to do this coming afternoon, Joshua's chapter 7 and 8, and I got to a certain point, and I was asking them certain questions, and, you know, I was asking a couple of brothers question, and what happened is we, um, he gave me some, some, some scriptures, he gave me a few verses, but I ended up reading the whole chapter, and I thought that the chapter was was a beautiful chapter. So I just, I just, my trip was great, Maury Tavel. I just want to go through this chapter and share it with all of you. All right? So it says here, Psalms 89. We're at Psalms 89 right now. A mosque kill of Etam the Ezraite. I will sing of Yahweh's steadfast love forever. To all generations I will proclaim your faithfulness with my mouth. So, let me just read on. I declare your steadfast love is confirmed forever. There in the heavens you establish your faithfulness. I have made a covenant with my chosen one. I have sworn to my servant David. I will establish your offspring forever. I will confirm your throne for all generations. Salah. So we understand that we understand that the Most High God made a, an everlasting covenant with Melech Dawi that it shall not fail one of his seed to sit on the throne. And to officiate and to be a prince over the nation of Israel, because really that's what kings are. They're princes, right, over the nation of Israel. There's only one true king of Israel, and that's the creator of heaven and earth, Yahweh by name. So that is the that is the true and only king of Israel, Yahweh Zavao. Um it says here. Your wonders, O Yehovah, are praised by the heavens. Your faithfulness, too, in the, assembly, in the assembly of holy beings. For who in the skies can equal Yehovah, can compare with Yehovah among the divine beings? A God greatly dreaded in the council of holy beings, held in awe by all around him? O Yehovah, God of hosts, who is mighty like you, O Yehovah? Your faithfulness surrounds you. So, who um, who in the heavens can compare to the creator of heaven and earth? None of the, the angelic beings come close to him because God is the creator of them all. So the psalmist is acknowledging the greatness and the power of the creator and saying that no one is to be compared unto him. No one is to be is to be spoken of in the same vein as the creator. The creator stands alone. Um, actually, this garment right here was made. Um, Elazar ben Israel. This garment was actually made to me or for me by my grandmother-in-law. And this was years ago. This is well over 10 years. This garment is a little bit ragged. But um, if you go to any tailor or if you have a seamstress around um, your area, and you just show them, a, you give them a picture of what I'm wearing, and they should be able to recreate it. Because it's just really a pullover, dashiki style, I guess what they call. And um, any seamstress or any good seamstress or tailor could just look at it. You know, I got stripes on the sleeves. 
Um, this was this was made for me, so you're not gonna find it in the stores. All right, so and that's really it. And just a garment that that goes down past the crotch area, and and that's that to your measurement to your fit. If you have a tailor, that's what you could do. Let me get back to the point. You rule the swelling of the sea. When its waves surge, you you still them. You you know the Most High God is the one that controls all the elements that are before Him or around Him. You know, so the Most High God is the one. Like I told y'all, when I went out there and I and I look on the Pacific side of of Panama, you know, the sea seemed like it's way out there. You no, know, the 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 currents of the or the or the tide has not come in yet. So the Most High God, can, he's the one that controls that going out of the sea and that coming in of it. He's the one that's in control of all things and everything. But he gave man, he gave man a mind of his own to be able to, to decipher what's right and what's wrong. All right? And those things are important. You crushed Rahab. He was like a corpse. With your powerful arm, you scattered your enemies. The heaven is yours. The earth too. The world and all it and all it holds. You established them. So everything in the earth belongs to the Most High God. Everything in the earth is, is God's creation. And the Most High God controls it all. So we have to give glory to the Creator for being able to have control of all the things that he created. But like I said, he didn't create us as robots. He created us as human beings to have thoughts and ideas and be able to discern from right and wrong because what fun is it to have this creation and not have someone or people willingly come and praise you and give glory and obeisance unto this great king. So this is the king that we serve and this is the king that we follow. North and south, you created them. Tabor and Hermon, sing forth your name. Yours is an arm endowed with might. Your hand is strong, your right hand exalted. So whenever, whenever we speak of the, of the arm of the Most High God, it's always speaking about his salvation. And his salvation that is speaking about is always towards, or most of the times it's spoken about, for the children of Israel or the children of Israel, right? So this is what we're speaking about now. Your, yours is an arm endowed with might. Your hand is strong, your right hand exalted. So the Most High God cannot be limited because his power is infinite. So symbolically speaking about his holy arm or his arm of salvation, it's just putting it in perspective that God is our Savior. He's our protector. He's our redeemer. He's the God that guides us and keeps us. And we have to acknowledge those things. Righteousness and justice are the base of your throne. Steadfast love and faithfulness stand before you. Righteousness. It's a just weight and a just balance is Jehovah's delight. So the Most High God deals with everything in a righteous manner. He deals with everything in a balanced way. He deals with the right of the manner rather than the wrong. The Most High God does not sway in his understanding and in what he wants us to do. We're the ones that sway and go aside from what the Most High God already has prescribed us to do. So those things are very important. Yah is very steadfast. It says... Steadfast love and faithfulness stand before you. Steadfast love and faithfulness. We have to be faithful to the creator of heaven and earth. Happy is the people who know the joyful shout. O Yehovah, they walk in the light of your presence. Mm. They rejoice in your name all day long. 
They are exalted through your righteousness. Happy is the people who know the joyful shout. O Jehovah, they walk in the light of your presence. They rejoice in your name all day long. They are exalted through your righteousness. Mm-mm-mm. Those are the people that constantly walk with the word of, of God in their mouth, who constantly make the Most High God they, they walk in partner, who make the, the, the Most High God the, the most essential thing in their lives. That's what we have to get to, making the Most High God the number one thing in our lives. A lot of people say they do, but that's not how they really live. That's not how they really are. No. Um, one of the most challenging things that I have when I when I go away, not one of the most challenging, but um, when you go away, sometimes the um, it's kind of difficult to find a place that's adequate for you to eat from. Uh, and I'm a picky eater. And um, my brother makes it his his um. It's like it's like he he just wherever he goes to eat, and I tell him I'm okay. You know he just feels bad because he's eating and I'm not eating or whatever. It's all right. But Panama has a lot of places, have a lot of um, Jewish restaurants. You know they have a Jewish community right in the center of the of the main town, right. So if you want to go out to a restaurant or whatever. They have all the stuff there. They have supermarkets. They have, they have um, restaurants. They have all types of stuff. Bakeries, all types of stuff. So it's not like I was ta- starving, you know. At times, um, my brother's wife cooked or whatever. But to be steadfast, right? That means that even if you're away, not around your norm, that you're not gonna say, you know what? Nobody's around. Let me just dibble and dabble in this unclean stuff. And then when I go back around people, I'll, I'll, you know, I'll hold fast to whatever it is that I'm doing. We have to be Israel wherever we're at. The Most High God is steadfast towards us, right? And giving us all that we need and all that we want. But we have to be steadfast in keeping his law, statutes, and commandments. For you are their strength in which they glory. Our horn is exalted through your favor. Truly our shield is of Jehovah, our king of the Holy One of Israel. Then you spoke to your faithful ones in a vision and said, I have com- conferred power upon a warrior. I have exalted one chosen out of the people. I have found out we, my servant, anointed him with my sacred oil. My hands shall be constantly with him, and my arms shall strengthen him. No enemy shall oppress him, no vile man afflict him. I'll crush his adversaries before him. I'll strike down those who hate him. My faithfulness and steadfast love shall be with him. His horn shall be exalted through my name. So it's talking about Melech Dawi and how the Most High God exalted him, put him in a position of power. Brothers and sisters, is the is the stream coming good? Coming through good? Let me just type this up there. I, I just want to make sure because I'm getting a little information over here. On my end, and I want to make sure that on your end, everybody is still Tov Mayo. Shalom. All right. I just want to make sure. It shows here like everything is good. I just want to be double, double sure. All right. So just bear with me. Yes, everyone's saying the stream is great. All right. It says here, I will set his hand upon the sea, his right hand upon the rivers. He shall say to me, you are my father, my rock, the rock my God, and the rock of my deliverance. I'll appoint him firstborn, highest of the kings of the earth. So it's talking about Melech Dawid. The psalmist is talking about 
all the things that the Most High God put on him. Remember at the end of Malek Dawi's life, God promised him that there shall always be someone that will be sitting at on the throne of Israel from the seed of David. So the psalmist is just reiterating that. I'll appoint him firstborn highest of the kings of the earth. I'll maintain my steadfast love for him always. My covenant with him shall endure. So, the Most High God makes covenant with us all, right? And when we are faithful towards God and we do the things that we're supposed to do, then the Most High God will be, will be faithful towards us. And that's basically the gist of that, all right? I'm not going to continue from there because it just continues in, in, the, same, in the same vein. And... um. I guess you get the gist of it. You get the understanding of it. So, steadfast love to the Creator, um, walking in the path of the Most High God, trusting in the Most High God, and 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 praying that the Most High God be with us. Now, I want to point out certain things. All right, and I'm I'm pointing this out because these are thoughts that go through my mind, and sometimes us as God's people. Um, so let me see here. So, yeah. So yeah, it's somebody that just came on and I had to um, delete their message and get them up out of here because people, you know, they, they are idiots sometimes. So yeah, like I was saying, everything that happens to you is not a cause of them. Don't blame God for all the bad that happens to you in your life, all right? Um, if you catch a cold, if you get a, 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 a fever, or sometimes we're just negligent, <laughs> and we do, and we neglect um, things that we should be doing in order to prevent certain, prevent certain things that happen to me. And I say that to say this. Yesterday I went to the supermarket. Um so I jumped out. There was a spot right in front of the supermarket that says no parking. Loading zone. Meaning this is where the trucks come. Only trucks will park there. But when people are in a rush, they go to the supermarket. They park right there. They take a chance. They go in. They get what they, what they get. And then they walk out. So a lot of times I do this. All right? I know I'm breaking the parking rule. Right, I could get a ticket, but I've been doing it for so long and not gotten a ticket because I run into the store and run out, and it's all good. The guys are usually out there packing the trucks. Um, but yesterday when I did it, I came out and I had a ticket. And the first thing that came to my mind was, what did I do wrong for the Creator? And I'm like, why am I blaming this on the on the Most High God? I parked in a place that said. Loading zone only between this hour and this hour. And I was within those hours parked there and I got a ticket. That was my negligence. So don't blame your negligence on the most high God. That's the point that I'm trying to make. When we make mistakes, when we do things, it's because we made a mistake. It's because we did the thing. Don't blame it on the creator. It's not the creator's fault. And that's the message that I want to bring you today. Take onus or take um, blame for the things that you do. Everything is not a punishment from the Most High God because of, of whatever, you know, sin you think that you might have. Sometimes it's just simply your negligence and the things that you do.
that is what causes us to have to suffer certain heartaches, all right? So that's all that is. That's my message to you today. Be circumspect. Don't blame God for all the wrong that's happening in your life. Sometimes you make mistakes. Sometimes you're negligent and consequences happen. Amen? So that's that. Um, the nights are longer, so I'm going to try to start um, a little bit earlier so we could get a little bit more time to speak and to talk. It's 8.34 right now. So what I'm going to do is I gave you all some, some talk. Now we're going to get to some music, all right? I know some of y'all like the music, and I don't know, some of y'all, you act like you don't like the music, but that's all right. We're gonna look. We're gonna look for ourselves some, some nice music right now. And we're gonna start with my sister Alina. Look at Jacob's children. Here we go. Look at Jacob's children all over this world. Like the video, subscribe to the channel and like, hit the notification button. Jacob, you better wake up. Uh huh. Uh huh. Yeah.
When the people don't go astray and we gon' know I had the same holy day, it's all in y'all's time. You know I never fake it cause I love you. My people losing patience in the struggle, it's all in y'all's time. Uh, uh, it figures that we searching, it scars you, we argue, but be the bigger person. Creator never changed, I'm glad that he above this, he does this. Y'all never love you for your substance. We just gotta get it straight as I elaborate. Nothing could be fake cause the righteous just gotta marinate. When you official, it uplifts you. We gotta keep it simple cause you don't want the father to resent you. Now words sound power will be shouting it louder. When the people full of life, this when we sending them flowers. So always be an asset, not a liability. The chemistry you feel in me is only high energy. I feel a need to speak. I always try to keep the peace. Please don't force a hand cause I never was the weakest link. Just seeing the focus, we need the holist. Most highs always there at your weakest moment. Uh. When the people don't go astray, we gon' know how to sing the holy day. It's all in y'all's time. You know I never fake it cause I love you. My people losing patience in the struggle. It's all in y'all's time. When the people don't go astray, and we gon' know I had the same holy day. It's all in y'all's time. You know I never fake it cause I love you. My people losing patience in the struggle. It's all in y'all's time. When my people don't go astray, we gon' all have the same holy day. You know I never fake it cause I love you. My people losing patience in the struggle. My people don't go astray, we can all have the same day. You know I love you, don't lose the most high to the struggle. Uh, when the people don't go astray, we gon' all have the same holy day, it's all in y'all's time. You know I never fake it cause I love you, my people losing patience in the struggle, it's all in y'all's time. When the people don't go astray, and we gon' know I had the same holy day, it's all in y'all's time. You know I never fake it cause I love you, my people losing patience in the struggle, it's all in y'all's time.